everyone welcome to another exciting edition of words images and worlds delighted on this episode to be talking with someone who works in the uh, space of writing for young people and particularly titles like the zoe washington series a soft place to land and i believe there's also a book on the way this coming october as well um, so delighted to be talking with author janae marks janae thank you for jumping in and joining yeah thank you so much for having me my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, as an English teacher and longtime reader, I always like to ask, what draws people to the written word? Um, what made you take on this world of authoring? Yeah, I mean, it kind of, I sort of fell into it. I've always liked reading and writing um, as a child, um, but I never really thought about being an author growing up. Um, I always just kind of did it for fun. Reading was just a hobby. And I wrote in a ton of journals as a kid and eventually kind of started doing some more creative writing. Um, but, you know, I was always really interested in other things too. So I didn't really think about becoming an author, but as in um, when I went to college, I decided to become an English major because of how much I loved reading. And at that point, I even actually thought about out, you know, using that degree to work in publishing, which I ended up doing actually for a few years after graduating. But, um, but again, I wasn't thinking about being an author, I just thought it'd be cool to work in the book world behind the scenes. Um, but you know, as an English major, I ended up taking some creative writing classes and just really enjoyed them. And then I took a literature class, my senior year of college called girls books, it was a children's children's literature class, where we read books, featuring female protagonists and talked about some of the themes in them and how those themes, even if some, even in some of those classic books like Little Women and you know and things like that, can really can still be relevant today. And so we read a mix of classic and more current um, children's books in that class, and mm -hmm. really studied them the way that we studied books in all my other classes, where we read you know books like from you know Shakespeare or Poe and things like that. So it was really interesting to really dig into these books, and also it kind of reminded me how much I loved these books as a kid, you know, and how much they really brought up a lot of really good in emotions and, you know, like how they helped me process things as a kid, these kinds of books. And so that kind of really made me excited about children's literature specifically. And one of our last assignments in that class was to write a chapter of our own children's book just for fun. And I had the most fun writing that um, that little exercise compared to any of the other writing I had done in my creative writing classes where I was trying to write short story, you know, your typical literary fiction short stories that everybody writes in college. Like I just wasn't having as much fun writing that. So I sort of fell into writing for kids. Um, and then after that, I decided to try to keep going with it. So yeah, it sort of kind of came together, um, I guess, due to my love of reading and writing growing up and eventually kind of found it again in college. I love it. Love it. Uh, and I love how uh, literacy just kind of followed you through in the journey. Love mm -hmm. that. Um, so thinking about writing for young people, I, I imagine there's a good bit of challenge to that. And I'm curious about what it's like for you to craft in that space. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it definitely is challenging. In some ways, it can be it, it just depends. I think my writing voice is is suited for this age group. It's like, I feel like I've heard other authors say, you know, like, they're a tween in an adult body, like, are they still, their brain can still very much, you know, think about what it's like to be a kid again. I feel like I still have such strong memories from that time in my life that in some ways it is, you know, really easy for me to um, pull out, you know, a lot of those emotions and way of thinking and things like that. But I think the challenge is we are adults. And so of course, you know, writing about writing in the voice of a child, even if I do have such strong memories of what it was like for to be me, you know, can be, you know, you have to really work at making sure that, you know, you're sounding authentic and also timeless in a way because you don't want you also don't want to go to the other end of the spectrum where you're trying to really pay attention to how kids talk now and and throwing all of that lingo in there either you have to kind of be timeless about it and not try to age what you're writing but you also have to kind of still like write in a way that really resonates with young readers so it's for me I tried to read a lot you know um as soon as I realized children's literature was what I wanted to try to write. I just dove into reading about as much of it as I could, especially the books that had been getting a lot of positive attention. You know, let's see why they were getting so much praise from kids and adults alike and studying them and um, eventually was able to, you know, kind of get together my own writing voice for this age group. But it is a challenge. And I think figuring out what to write about, but I think, you know, again, you have to kind of touch, you'd have to kind of remember what it's like to be a kid. And a lot of those things, you know, still are relevant today, like friendship drama, you know, dealing with family themes and dealing with change and all those transitions that happen in that age group. I think, 
even if you're writing, um, you know, even if I wasn't that age from now many decades, you know, it's still a lot of those things that happen to me are still happening to kids today. And so that kind of makes it easier. But yeah, it definitely is a challenge, um, which is why, like, you know, when you hear people say, oh, you write for kids, like, I could do that. Or, you know, I, you know, I thought about doing a kid's book, like making it sound like it's so easy. It really isn't as easy as it sounds, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a careful craft, and um, children are an honest audience too, uh, from what I understand. Um, but you do it well. You do it well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I always like to ask about, or, or usually like to ask about, an experience that you've had with a young reader. I know that sometimes readers send in mail, or maybe on school visits, or things like that. You've had the chance to interact. Um, with readers. And so anything sort of interesting, surprising, humorous that uh, you've experienced in that regard? Yeah, I have a couple of um, anecdotes. I mean, in general, I think going to school visits, I do get a chance to hear from a lot of readers. And that's been cool, as well as ones who will write to me and send messages um, either to my in email, email inbox or to my PO box, send like actual snail mail. Um, and, you know, I've had some interesting questions in the Q&A at school visits. I that can be kind of funny. Like sometimes, um, like one question that is just particularly memorable because it kind of reminds you that like, you know, kids, they have, sometimes they just have no filter, but also they see that, you know, they might see things that you didn't even realize you were doing. So for example, in my book from the desk of Zoe Washington, the main story is around how her Zoe and her dad, um, her dad has been incarcerated. So she doesn't have a relationship with him. And in my second book, a soft place to land, the dad is also the character in that book that, um, like lost his job and and because he was laid off like they ended up having to sell their child at home move and so it kind of sets off the other plot points and this reader this kid was like do you have an issue with your own dad like why is the dad <laughs> always causing like why is there always some situation with the dad in your books and I was like wait do I have an issue with my own dad like I was like is this some subconscious thing that I'm doing it was just such a funny question that made me laugh because I was like wait a minute I never even thought about it kind of made me think like for the next book if I have a parent doing something I should have it be the mom next time like switch it up so I don't seem like I'm I don't know it was just funny and it just goes to show that kids really think you know that is a really uh -huh. insightful question um and you know again another reason not to um to like think less about kids. Like I think kids have the ability to really think and and really analyze and come to the conclusions and things like that in books. The other one that is definitely surprising and interesting is there is this one reader, her name is Inara, and she is, I think she started her Instagram channel when she was like 11 or 10 or something. <laughs> now she's like, and you know, it was run by her parents and she started out just doing a lot of book reviews and she even did a couple Instagram lives. So she was one of the first kids that I got to do like an Instagram live interview with like during the pandemic and things like that. But mm. then she caught the attention of a production company in Canada where she lives and they created this whole show with her called Inara's Bookshelf. And essentially, she, you know, recommends books on this little show. And each episode, she interviewed an author. And so they invited me to be on the show. So I got to film like an episode of this like mini, you know, like a show that's maybe like 10 minutes long. It's meant to just be aired in classrooms or on YouTube. But um, like I got to like go and, and because of it was about Zoe and she bakes, we ended up meeting at a bakery as she came down to the States with the production team and everything. They all came down here to Connecticut where I live and we met at a bakery and we filmed it there and it was so cool and something I've never done before and never thought I would have done. And it was all because of a reader. Um, so that was a, yeah. definitely the most unique <laughs> reader experience interaction I've had. Um, but most of the time, it's just all these awesome questions or letters or emails I get from kids that are also really cool. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. There's that humbling moment as a teacher where you've read something and you've read it a few times and you were talking about the insights that kids bring. Um, I've had students point out something and I've gone, oh, yeah, I bet that is what they meant by that. Uh, yeah. It's like, oh, uh, one of my students saw this and I read this multiple times and never saw it. So yeah, really I even had, kids. I even had a student say like, Oh, do you, are you naming a lot? Like, do you, um, did you name a lot of the last names or get inspired for some of the last names by the presidents? Cause there's one who, like Washington is one. And I think I forget what the other name, I have another like guest presidential last name in the book. And I like, didn't even realize <laughs> again, I was like, I did this subconsciously. I don't know. <laughs> but the fact that they thought of that, like they're obviously thinking about, you know, all kinds of things when they're reading books and, and not only that, the factual things, but also the emotional things, you know, a lot of times mm -hmm. one of the, some of the heartwarming experiences I 
it got is when a reader will tell me, you know, something personal, you know, because they related to something in the book. And that's always really heartwarming because that's exactly why we write these stories so that they feel less alone in those experiences too. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, that answers one of the questions that could have been tucked in, which is uh, what you hope readers take away from the work. So definitely that, that connection is, is so huge in yeah. literature. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so I mentioned you have a book that is on the way, and that is a split called, second. Yep, a split second. Yeah, we'll put the cover right here, so it's covering okay. my face, so people can see. <laughs> oh well, actually, depending on when this airs, it hasn't been released yet, so I don't know oh. when the podcast is going to be airing. So if it airs after like the first week of February, then yes, you'll have the cover. If not, Perfect. stay tuned. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'm going right. to be releasing it pretty soon. Or I could put a mystery box right here. Yeah. <laughs> so your face, the mystery box. Yes, yes. Um, so I know that is on the way. Anything else that you want to mention that has your creative attention as where as well as um, where people can find out about the work you're doing and school visits and things of that nature? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, in terms of what has my creative attention, you know, I'm definitely finishing up the last bit of work on that book. Um, so that's exciting, getting ready to start the other side of it, the promotion side of it after all mm -hmm. the writing is done. So revealing the cover, getting people excited about it. So that, that's going to be cool. Um, but yeah, now I'm really thinking about what's next, um, what I want to work on next, um, you know, gathering more inspiration for things. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm constantly thinking about, as well as, you know, preparing for more school visits coming up and other things like that. Um, and in terms of where you can find me, you, um, my website is JanaeMarks.com. Um, there's tons of information about my books and, you know, even some extra content. If you have read any of my books, like cupcake recipe and playlists and things like that, and teacher guides for any educators listening. And um, yeah, and then on social media, if anybody is on there, it's pretty much at Janae Marks Books on the main things like Instagram and Facebook and things like that. So, yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Janae. I appreciate the work that you're doing. Uh, it's great as an English teacher to be able to take books to the classroom and, and share them. And so uh, wonderful, wonderful youth literature that's out there. And thank you for spending the time to talk about it a little bit with me. Yeah, thanks for inviting me and for having a podcast where we get to share about this stuff. So it is a pleasure, truly a pleasure. <laughs>